Greetings, students of the Force and Acolytes of the Galaxy, and welcome back. We've been expecting you. The Sith are known by the galaxy throughout the history of not only being atrocious warmongers, but using horrendous methods in their pursuit of galactic domination and ultimate victory over their ideological enemies, the Jedi. Many Sith sorcerers and alchemists of old would create various monstrosities in attempts to gain a leg over their light side adversaries. This included mutating living creatures to create monsters such as the Tarentatech and the Leviathan. Other times, it might include using a deadly virus, such as the Techno virus to turn organic beings into cybernetic slaves and war machines. Well, today we will be discussing one of the most horrendous Sith experiments that may rise above the rest, the Sith Stalkers. Unlike the previously mentioned creatures, Sith made stalkers from their own kind. These horrors would terrorize the battlefields of the Old Republic, striking fear into Jedi, and they have been known to even upset a few Sith. So what is a Sith Stalker? Well, students of the Force, sit back as we open up yet another Sith Holocron, as today we will tell you about the Sith Stalkers and how Starkiller almost became one. One image of the Sith Stalker and you'll recognize the armor almost immediately. It is one of Starkiller's most famous looks, but also the helmet design takes influence from the Mandalorians, as well as the Ubis warriors. So let's take you through the process of how one of these would be made and constructed. We start by watching Sith Lords pursuing the aftermath of a large battle. Bodies are strewn everywhere, but through the Force, they can still sense something. That something is suffering. Not just any suffering, but a great deal of pain, as one of their own is attempting to use the dark side to keep themselves alive, holding on to it, fighting through their grave injuries. A small search later, and they might come across an acolyte, or perhaps an apprentice that has survived the battle, but is laying on the ground heavily damaged from it, disfigured from beyond repair. He could be missing entire chunks of his body, and barely even alive, but alive nonetheless. And the Sith usually adhere to the philosophy of waste not, want not, so they retrieve the poor wounded soul off of the battleground, hauling him back to their laboratory. However, what awaits this young Sith will make him wish that he had just been left there to die on the field of battle. Strapping him onto a table, the process would begin as machines would fall in around him, Mechanical arms and needles would start to remove any excess flesh, which was, in a sense, all of it. They would then start fusing the stalker armor directly onto the exposed body. Many organs would also be removed and replaced with cybernetics, removing the requirement or ability to eat or sleep. Long sharp talons would be surgically implanted into their fingers to give them a more terrifying appearance. And finally, the most important part the helmet would be grafted directly onto their faces. They would be alive and awake for the entire process, feeling every single bit of it. The unbearable pain they would go through is actually on purpose, as their masters want them to grow deeper and stronger within the dark side. As the stalker is not born, it is created. After the horrific process is complete, the Sith stalker would be much stronger than before. They would be physically stronger, faster, more agile, and very powerful in the Force. Their gloves and talons would be built in a way that would allow them to continue to use Force lightning without it backfiring. This entire process reminds me of Darth Vader's transformation. Perhaps Sidious used the information about the Sith Stalker creation to make Vader. Well, unlike Vader, the Stalkers did not require an automatic breathing system and could breathe on their own, which came out as ragged and wheezing breaths through their faceplates. The Sith Stalkers would now be a part of their own private sect of the Sith Army. Their masters and lords would dispatch them to take care of Jedi targets, or even kill off their Sith, of whom the masters perceived as rivals. The Sith assassins of the Inbaran Academy had nothing on the absolute weapons of war that were the Sith stalkers. Their terrifying appearance helped strike fear into their Jedi targets, which as you know is a powerful tool to employ against a light side wielder. Keeping them too distracted will impede their ability to touch the Force, and terrifying the Sith stalkers truly were. From their appearance, Appearance, to their movements, as well as a stalker's tendency to collect lightsabers as trophies. They were truly masters of the art of killing Jedi and Sith rivals. The Sith stalkers and how they act not only remind me of Vader, but also General Grievous in a way by how they are cyborgs and collect lightsabers as prizes. I'm beginning to think that perhaps Sidious had this knowledge on hand and was a big fan of the Sith stalker process, wanting to use it on a non-force sensitive before maybe using it on one of his apprentices in the future. 
In the end though, likely deeming Anakin, Darth Vader, too great of a prize to fully transform into a Sith Stalker. Speaking of which, the Stalker armor is only seen in the Force Unleashed, as Galen Merrick is plagued by visions of fighting an evil version of himself that wore this armor. However, it did exist in the ancient days of the Sith. Later, Galen learns that if he is successful and kills his master and Darth Vader, then Sidious would take him and transform him into a Stalker of his own. Many believe that the Sith Stalker version of Galen Merrick is perhaps the most powerful iteration of the character, showcased by his ability to conquer and defeat the son of the Chosen One, Luke Skywalker, the ultimate tool of the Sith nothing like a full-blown apprentice, with their mental state being far too deteriorated. Still though, it is appropriate of the dark side and the ancient Sith that they did not let their near-dead apprentices go to waste, and had a terrifying plan for those that survived the battlefield. It's also interesting, of course, that Darth Sidious took huge inspiration from this process on General Grievous, Lord Vader, and in Legends continuity, even attempted to do so and was successful with Starkiller himself. In my opinion, this is one of the darkest and most sadistic aspects of all of Star Wars lore, and showcases the true brutality of the Sith, the way of power, and the way of suffering. With this in itself being an aspect of the Sith in Star Wars lore that I would love to see highlighted in some media one day. But anyway my friends, students of the Force, and acolytes, did you know what a Sith Stalker was before this video? Were you aware that this is the ultimate fate of another alternate version of Galen Merrick and Starkiller? What are your thoughts on the story of the Sith Stalkers? Outside of the Force Unleashed, there isn't a whole lot of information about these strange warriors. Again though, they do exist. But if you like what you saw, and want to see more videos like this in the deep Sith lore, be sure to force crush that subscribe button, and comment down below what other topics you'd like to see on the channel. Until next time my friends, be careful, and may the Force be with you.